In this video, we're going to go over sequence loops and logic in the context of a polar plot measurement. This sequence uses an outline turntable to take a polar plot measurement of a speaker. When we run the sequence, it asks if we want to recall data. I'll select yes, it jumps over most of the sequence and will just display example data. You can see step number one pass when I hit yes. So let's right click on it, configure the step, and see what the behavior is. This step is configured to jump on fail to the log suite. If the step doesn't fail, so if we hit yes, it will run to step two, which is the recall curve step. So let's look at what happens in the recall curve step. I'll click on the plus sign next to it, and we can see it will jump on either pass or fail to step 24, which is the display step. So no matter what happens, the rest of the sequence is skipped, and we just display the recall data. So now I'll run the sequence, but I won't recall data. You can see step number one fails, step number two never runs, and we jump directly to the stimulus step. Now the sequence asks me if the turntable is at zero degrees. If I click yes, it's going to jump over step number five, which is a step that will set it to zero degrees, and go directly into the play and record. If I hit no, it will run step number five to auto zero it. Looking at the indentation, you can see there's two separate loops here. My turntable is already in the home position. Now we'll jump into the first one. As the sequence loops, we're taking the frequency response at 10 degree increments. In the table, you can see what the current angle is. And in the polar plot, we're drawing the different frequencies at the different angles. And in the graph in the bottom left, we're overlaying all the curves together. I'm going to abort the sequence for now because it takes a bit of time, and we'll just look at the logic. This loop here will jump up to the on-axis normalization step, step 9, and after 18 repetitions, we'll jump to step 18, which is the home prompt. The way this sequence is written, we're going to take a 180 degree measurement of the speaker. The 18 repetitions will create a loop index named angle and increase that by 10 degrees per run. This will help us keep track of our data because every time it runs, we'll prepend the data name with an increment of 10 degrees. So the first one will be 0 degrees, then 10 degrees, 20 degrees, and etc. You can see that angle is in the memory list, and that's displayed here in the table as the sequence runs. If we look at the analysis step on the curves tab, it only looks like it's outputting something called fundamental. If we go to configure step, we can see it's also set to overwrite data. That means every time this step runs, it will overwrite and output only one fundamental. So how are we saving the multiple pieces of data? Because looking here at curves, we can see fundamentals prepended with our angle number. If we open up step number nine, we can see we're taking the fundamental, which was output from step number 13, and dividing it by the on-axis response. That on-axis response will be what's happening at zero degrees. The output is named normalize, and if we look in the memory list, you can see there's a bunch of items called normalize that have the degrees next to them. Opening up step 10, we're taking the fundamental reference mic that was output from step 13 in the loop. We're adding zero to it, which will keep it exactly the same. We're not actually changing the data inside. If we click on the data out, we're only seeing a couple things on step 13. So this fundamental reference mic from 13 is being fed into 9 and 10. All that step 10 is doing is creating new names for our different pieces of data. If we look at the configure step, instead of overwrite, it's set to keep repeated data. Because these are set to keep repeated data, this is what's giving us all of these curves. If we look at the normalized curve, zero degrees is comparing itself to zero degrees, so it will be completely flat. If we look at the other curves, it will be the comparison of that angle towards the zero degrees. So if I drop 10 degrees on the same graph, we can see the difference between 10 degrees and 0 degrees. 
if we looked at the 0, 0 fundamental, it will match up exactly with the on-axis response, which is why 0 degrees normalized is a completely flat line. I'll change the line style, we can see they're exactly the same. And again, if I drop 10 on here, what we saw before on the normalized is the difference between those two curves. I'm going to skip ahead and show you what happens after 18 repetitions. Looking at the table, you can see the angle is 180 degrees, which means we have done 18 repetitions, and step 17 jumps out of the loop and goes to step 18. This gives us a prompt to zero the turntable. So now I set the turntable back to zero degrees. It then asks to press enter when the turntable is back at the home position. So it is, I'll click enter here, and now it tells me to rotate the speaker. This sequence is meant to run once 180 degrees, set it back to zero degrees, put the speaker on its side, and then run 180 degrees again. This is the point of the second loop. It jumps up back to the beginning of the loop and creates a new on-axis response for the speaker with a 90 degree azimuth, but it's zero degrees to the microphone. If you look at the table, you can see the azimuth is set to 90. This is why there are two degrees numbers on our measurements. The first number is the azimuth, and the second is the measurement on the turntable. I'm going to abort the sequence again so we don't have to see all these measurements and see how the sequence behaves now. Steps 15 and 16 are two separate displays. Step number 14 is a limit of what the azimuth is. Because we aren't at zero degrees anymore, we're at 90 degrees, it fails this limit step and it will jump to the polar plot horizontal display. And where is that 90 degrees coming from? When we look at the bottom of the loop where we rotated the speaker on its side, we can see we created a loop index name called azimuth, set that to increment by 90, so the first time we run this sequence, this value will be zero. And after it loops once, it will increment by 90 degrees, and that change will affect the limit step in step number 14, and will jump to a different display. We only rotate the speaker once, so after one repetition, we jump out of that loop and go to the directivity index, and then to the final display. Now when we look at the curves in the memory list, the two degrees make sense. The first number is the azimuth, so zero degrees means the speaker is vertical, and 90 degrees means the speaker is horizontal. The second number is where the turntable is, so what direction the speaker is in comparison to the microphone. 